name is Irene Renstrom, and I live in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm standing in front of my house that I haven't been in in five years because it's contaminated. I was here for 20 years. I hired a roofer to put on a new roof, and they suggested isoboard under the red clay tile that other roofers said was not a good application for Arizona because it breaks down. And then they put a foam roof on top and didn't seal around the skylight. So during a rainstorm in November that lasted two days, the ceiling fell in and the water came pouring into the house and flooded the home. My insurance company didn't even come into the house and they told me to go after the roofer that they weren't going to suffocate. And so the roofer then hired a remediation company that came in to do the work. And what I'm going to do now is show you the house because I had to hire a contractor and he tore down the ceilings and you'll see everything that's in there is why I was so sick and I'm doing the video so that other people that may have the same symptoms that I have and had may understand that it could be from a thing called wet building syndrome. So I'm going to take the camera right now and just go into the building and I'm going to put my mask on but at first I'm going to show you how my house looked prior to any of this happening. This is the front of my house and you can see the slanted uh, tile roof and that's where the isoboard went and it was a gorgeous home. This is the living room as you come in and the ceiling went all the way up to the family room. The family room here is where the ceiling fell in onto the couch. The water poured down to this first level and that's the dining room that sits right under the family room. Now um, the lawyers never went into the house so they would have no way of knowing that once we did the teardown, this is what the insulation looked like. It was charred. And the microband that the remediation company used that said that it would kill the mold, this is how those beams look as a picture so you can see that the mold was still coming through it. So I'm going to walk you through now. As you come into my living room, we actually did the teardown of the dining room so that we could see the subfloor. And as you see the subfloor, you see that there is a lot of moisture on it. And the uh, particle board, when those things get wet, because the remediation company didn't throw out the carpet or pad, that emits formaldehyde. I had industrial hygienists come into the house and they tested my home. Here's the mold that you can still see. Evident. I was sick in, in my master bedroom. I couldn't understand why I was so sick. Well, it's because it was all the way down to the first level. And then they had never removed the drywall that went up the stairwell because the water actually went down into the stairwell when it was flooding. And even the light fixture had three inches of water in it. I'll show you the ceiling. The general contractor I hired, he did a sloppy job, didn't even get a containment room or use a negative air machine, but you can see how the ceiling was compromised that no one touched. And my lawyers, had they sent anyone into the house, would have understood that they could have proved causation, which they said they'd have a hard time doing, but no one ever looked at the house or any of the damage that was evident. You can see with the ductwork taken out, which was even muddy from the rain, that uh, the beams are all still full of mold and uh, it's coming through, even through the microband that they said that was supposed to stop it from growing. You can see all this as well. And then uh, when they had put the skylight in, we had another leak. And after that, I got sick, more sick actually. But uh, after the settlement, I couldn't go after the installer for the skylight because it was already settled. But there was two inches, there was a two inch gap. They didn't, they cut the beam short. They didn't put any hangers. And uh, I think you could see maybe from this way that uh, there's, a, there's a two inch gap between those beams when it's settled. 
So uh, I had the house tested and it showed high levels of fluorinated hydrocarbon as well, which is what the ISO board, uh, I was told by the industrial hygienist that it emits. Mold causes mycotoxins that are extremely harmful. And I had lived in this house for two years before I realized that it might be the house that's making me sick. And so now I'm going to go through the symptoms with you and let you know uh, what, uh, what I felt when I was living in the home and after when I was actually had moved out of the house. Hold on a minute, please. Let me put the mask down. At first, uh, my voice crackled, and then the vocal cord was paralyzed after living in the house for about five months after the first section of the roof was done. And after they sprayed the microban, they didn't do a containment room, so it oversprayed in the house. And I got diarrhea, and I was tired most of the time. I got sharp headaches, my muscles were burning, and my joints were aching, and they, the doctors thought I had MS. And uh, it was very difficult for me to swallow. I had a swallow problem for a long time, so then they tested me, my thyroid, and it kept showing negative. My voice would be down to a whisper, and after the second leak, my ears plugged. I sounded like I had a cold all the time and uh, sinus problems that no one could figure out what was going on. My hair and eyelashes were falling out. I had random nosebleeds for about four years. I had rashes on both sides of my body that burned and itched. And when I went back into my house at one point, I got red bumps all over my uh, hands and feet and my body. And the doctor said it was toxic overload that actually changed my blood count. I had trouble breathing, and so they x-rayed me and found granulomas and neuromas, and then the doctor, the environmental doctor, put me on oxygen for about a year. But the most damaging part was the toxic toxicity in my brain that a neurologist diagnosed me with. It was called um, uh, toxic uh, encephalopathy, and it's kind of a brain fog, and it uh, made it difficult for me to learn any new tasks. Now. Uh, I talked about throwing out the wet carpet and pad, which caused high levels of formaldehyde, but I also wanted to say that my healthy dog, Snoopy, he was paralyzed shortly after we moved out, and then um, he got bone cancer that's not typical for a small bone dog, and then right before he died, uh, they diagnosed him with a tumor in the heart, and that's all after moving out of the house within 10 months. I'm also a very... Uh, orderly person, and when I had moved out of the house over to my mom's, uh, it was just messes all the time. I, I just uh, didn't want wash the dishes, clean the house, I just didn't know what was wrong with me. And then slowly I found environmental doctors that I had to fly out of state to see that, uh, because in Arizona there aren't very many that you can find, and they were the ones who actually were able to help me get better. And uh, now I do have chemical sensitivity, so I can't walk into carpet or furniture stores or be around new paint or renovations. And being a realtor, that's really difficult for me. And um, so any new smells are, are hard for me to deal with, and my voice goes down to a whisper all the time. I still have insomnia, but it's getting better. And anybody that may have some of these symptoms, if, uh, if you think that this reminds you of, of what I've talked about, then maybe you should seek an environmental doctor. Thank you for listening.